Today, I want to talk about why I'm skipping right over the RTX 4000 series GPUs. I recently made a video talking about when you should upgrade your PC. And much to my surprise, that video performed quite well. So in all sincerity, thank you. Thank you very much. But in the comment section of that video, many of you were talking about the upcoming RTX 4000 series graphics cards, and you were even asking my opinion on if you should wait and upgrade, if I'm going to upgrade. And so I thought I would make a follow-up video and address those comments specifically. Now, let me clarify just a couple of things really fast. So first and foremost, I'm well aware, this video may be just a little bit premature. After all, the cards have not been officially announced yet. I do believe we already have enough information to make an informed decision about what we can expect from the upcoming cards. And that way we know if we're going to get ready to buy or if we can go ahead and take advantage of some incredible deals that are on the market right now. Secondly, obviously I am a content creator. I'm a small content creator, but I am a content creator. And so in the event, that AMD or Nvidia were to reach out to me and offer a brand new card from the upcoming generation, I would happily accept it, I would benchmark it, and I would do a full review of that card on the channel. And I think that should go without saying. As a general consumer who already owns a 3080 and a 3070, I'm not rushing out to spend my hard earned money on a graphics card I don't need when I have two cards that are perfectly capable of doing everything I need and more, not to mention the upcoming cards might not be as good as you think, and we're gonna talk about that starting right now. Why am I making the claim that I'm about to walk right past the most powerful graphics cards we have ever seen? Well, the answer is in the question itself. Where do you think the power will come from? Wattage. Every leak, every rumor all suggests these cards will require a ton of wattage. And yes, I understand their leaks and their rumors, but they do come from quite reputable sources. And honestly, it just, it just makes sense, okay? If you look at the history of graphics cards, they've been pumping in more wattage over the years. And right now we're at the point of more wattage and that's what's going to happen we're going to need more wattage to power the new cards and i want to talk about why that is a problem you might be saying why should you care about the extra wattage and the answer is quite simple money it's going to cost you more money if you have a power supply that is only 650 watts or 700 watts that is not going to be enough for an entire system that has a graphics card that pushes over 400 watts by itself, not including overclocking, not including the NVIDIA boost that's gonna come along with it if you properly cool it. Good luck with that, by the way. And also not including the transient power spikes that the 30 series cards get all the time. Gamers Nexus recently made a video talking about transient power spikes within the 30 series cards, power levels and the wattage can temporarily jump really high. And if you don't have a power supply that can handle that spike, guess what happens? Your entire system shuts down. And guess what? It's not going to get any better with the upcoming 4000 series cards that require over 400 watts by themselves. If you go and you buy a new card, chances are you will need to go upgrade your power supply. Yeah, 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 but I already have a thousand watt, a 1200 watt power supply. Okay, cool, good for you. But most other gamers don't. They just don't because buying a thousand watts for a power supply up to this point really was was more of a luxury it's more of a future proofing concept that wasn't really needed unless you were doing SLI overclocking or something like that but for the average gamer yeah they're not rocking a thousand watt or 1200 watt power supply they're they're just not because it hasn't really made sense up to this point. But now let's talk about proper cooling on the card. Obviously with the cards requiring more wattage and more power, they will generate more heat. Now that's introducing more heat into your PC as a whole, more heat than whatever your current graphics card is. And so now you may need to really think about your overall cooling solution. Maybe it's time to upgrade your fans. Maybe it's time to add more fans. Maybe it's time to look in the water cooling. But on top of that, in order for Nvidia or the AIB cards to offer you a decent cooling solution out of the box, they're gonna have to add a bigger and thicker heat sink to the card. And that will make the card bigger and thicker overall. And so that means if you have a PC set up right now where you have a graphics card that barely fits into your system, chances are the new cards will not fit at all. And so now you may have to go buy a brand new case altogether. And so worst case scenario, you may be somebody who's in a situation where your 
going to buy the card, but that means you have to buy a new power supply and now that means you may even have to buy a new case. There's a lot to consider here just because these cards will require so much wattage. But now let's talk about pricing. There's no way the 4080 can come out this year and still be $699 for a founder's card. First and foremost, inflation is incredibly high right now in America. And I can't speak for all the other countries out there, but based on the comments of my last video, it sounds like Europe is still struggling with the 30 series cards being above MSRP. I just don't see how the cards would be the same price. We just spent the better part of 18 months selling RTX 3080s for $1,200. A 3080 MSRP was $699 and they were selling for $1,200 on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, even at Micro Center in some cases. And then what happened? Nvidia said, well, hey, if somebody's gonna get $1,200 for that card, let's copy and paste it, change it a little bit, call it a 3080 Ti, and we'll price it at $1,200. And that's exactly what happened. And that is what's going to happen with the new cards. The 4080 won't be $1,200. I'm pretty confident about that because they'll probably put a 4080 Ti somewhere in that price range but the 4080 will not be $699. And if I'm wrong, come on back to the comment section here on this video and let me know, hey, the cards were announced, you were wrong, it's $699. I will be very happy to be wrong in that case because I think it would be great if the card was $699, but I just don't see where that would, that would ever happen. And my favorite reason why I'm not getting a 40 series card is because I just completed my dream PC. Well, really, I like to call it my set it and forget it PC. Basically, I went into it with a mindset of buy what I want now and plan to sit on it for quite a few years. Set it and forget it. Many people in my life, friends, coworkers, family, have often told me, even some of you as viewers of the channel, you've told me, hey, it seems like you're never satisfied. You're constantly chasing the next upgrade. And so I wanted to get to a point to where I could just set it and forget it for a while and kind of prove to everybody, including myself, that I can be happy with the setup. And right now I am happier than I've ever been with my current gaming setup, my PC, my desk, my monitor, my TV, everything. I am more happy than I've ever been with my setup. My current setup is a Lee and Lee Air Mini, which is fully water cooled, which is something you basically never see. It's an all white and blue aesthetic inspired by Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta from Dragon Ball Super. I even added in a Davoom pixel art box with a Dragon Radar, and honestly, it is the cleanest PC I've ever built in my life. It's the most beautiful PC I've ever built. It's the most powerful PC I've ever built. I could not be happier with this PC. It has a RTX 3080 in it, along with an AMD Ryzen 5800X. I absolutely love the way the Dominator RAM looks in the PC. And overall, this PC can do anything and everything that I need it to do, and I don't really need an upgrade at this time. Remember the last video? Only upgrade when your PC can no longer do what you built it to do. And also, like I said in the last video, if you have older hardware, like a 1070, for example, that card is six years old at this point. If a 1070 can go for six years and still go strong, how many years do you think I can get out of a 3080? How many years can you get out of a 3080? So if you already have a 3080, you really don't need to upgrade right now. It's not even technically two years old at the time of this recording. We still have a month left for that. And then on top of that, if you do have a 1070, for example, going to a 3070, going to a 3080 will be a massive upgrade for you. It will be a night and day difference. You do not need the 40 series cards and all the other problems that come along with it. But that's my opinion. Those are my thoughts on the 40 series cards. I will be more than happy to be wrong about a lot of things that I said. NVIDIA, please prove me wrong in your announcement. Time will tell. I look forward to talking to you in the comment section down below this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, consider becoming a subscriber. I would really appreciate it. And all of your kind words have really meant a lot to me lately in the comment section. So 
Thank you so much for all the love and support. I really appreciate it. I will continue to do the best I can to bring you value in all the videos. You keep being awesome and I will see you down below in the comments. Until next time, E-Rock out.